Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to see more about government policies. So as an accountant, it's good for you to know the implication of government policies on the economy. So government policies can be viewed from two double-edged swords. That is the monetary policies and the fiscal policies. So these are tools used by government to regulate economic activities over time for a given country, all right? So fiscal policy on one hand is the responsibility of government and you can see this through changes in government spending and tax collection and government budgets. Uh, then monetary policy is executed by a country central bank on behalf of government through various uh, windows like the open market operations, through treasury bills, through changing the reserve requirement and the use of discount rates. All right, so these are tools used by government to control economic activities in a particular country. So for Nigeria, this policy is managed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. And of recent, February 27th of 2024, uh, the CBN has issued its monetary policy communique and has made some monetary policy decisions like raising monetary policy rates by 400 basis points from um, 18.75% to 22.75%, all right, that's 4% increase. Then you can see that also the cash reserve ratio has um, raised also from 32.5% to 45%. The bank has left liquidity ratio at 30% over time. So we're going to see the impact of these three main tools on the economy and how it affects economic uh, players like banks and how it affects you as an individual and how uh, you can use this information to sharpen your knowledge and be able to contribute on national discourse. All right. So uh, CBN typically hold a regular monetary policy committee meetings. So after the meeting of May 23, there was another meeting on July 2023 as well, but this time under an acting CBN governor of Fola Shodun A. Shonobi. All right, then of recently, after the uh, confirmation of the new CBN governor in the person of Olayemi Kadoso, held its first uh, monetary policy committee meeting on the 27th of February 2024. All right. And the decisions from these meetings are given as follows. Monetary policy rate, MPR for short, was raised by 400 basis points to 22.75% from 18.75. Uh, cash reserve ratio for that meeting was raised also to 45% from 32.5%, while liquidity ratio was maintained at 30%. All right. So we're going to see what these ratios actually mean for banks and what it means to you as an individual and how you're able to understand and be able to contribute on our discussions as they arise. So for instance, on the cash reserve ratio, we said it was raised to 45% from 32.5%. Uh, these are reserves that are kept, that banks hold with the central bank, all right? So this reserve is used to manage excess liquidity in the economy and if the bank perceives there to be excess money circulation, you can raise this reserve ratio to mop up this excess liquidity in circulation and keep it as a reserve with the central bank. So this is a typical bank A that has um, from previous quarter, FY 2022, 1.7 trillion Naira and H1 of 2023 has 2.33 trillion Naira, right? So let's see how um, with this new change in cash reserve ratio, how the um, cash reserve CBN would increase. So you can see, for instance, this is hypothetically, the new CBN um, cash reserve ratio for the 5% and the old ratio 32.5%, which means that there's a change of 138%, right? So what this means is that if I should apply this change to the last reserves with the CBN in the cash reserve for that bank, it will rise from 2.3 trillion to 3.2 trillion. 
all right which means that the bank or the cbn is mopping excess cash from bank a of 890 million imagine you have 10 banks in a, in a given economy for that country it means that this amount all put together will be mopped up by the cbn from their position into the cash reserves for the cbn all right so this is how the cash reserve ratio works for banks it's all used by the cbn to mop excess cash in circulation through the banks limiting the amount of cash banks can lend out to customers all right so the next uh ratio to look at is the liquidity ratio and from the mpc uh meeting it was decided to retain this amount at 30 percent which means that banks need to have at least 30 percent of its uh customer deposits in liquid assets right so for a typical bank liquid assets are assets in the form of cash your cash balances for your day-to-day -day, uh in capital operations you have operating accounts with the CBN. So all banks are mandated to have an account with the CBN, which they used to pay for uh, transactions. Then we have the treasury bills through the open market operation, OMO. The other liquid assets also include investment in securities due from other banks. These are uh, basically accounts a bank A owns with another bank, probably to facilitate transactions. Next, we have the customers deposits which are monies you see with a typical bank they can be in the form of demand deposits savings deposits or term deposits so determine the liquidity ratio this is simply the total liquid asset divided by the total customer deposit all right so you can see for this particular bank the liquidity ratio is above the regulatory requirement of 30 percent which means the bank uh has met this particular requirement then of course the monetary policy rate which is the npr so from the mpc decision we saw that this was raised by 400 basis points or by four percent to 22.75 percent from 18.75 percent all right what does this mean to you as an individual and to the bank so i have listed eight points to help us understand what the monetary policy rate are uh, covers first is that the monetary policy rate is the rate that the cbn will lend to commercial banks right then these commercial banks then use this rate as a benchmark for lending to customers so if you want to approach the bank what this means is that they cannot lend to you below in the worst case scenario below the npr rate all right so as npr is increased or raised the cbn wants to make cash expensive to get by making loans and borrowings expensive so it makes it hard and expensive for you to take a loan from a bank we will see how shortly the cbn also wants to reduce cash and credit in the system as it's used when inflation is high like we have currently inflation is on the high side close to about 30 percent and to determine what this bank lending rate is like i said the npr is the base then the bank can then include a credit spread based on the risk assessed for lending to that particular customer so that spread is then added to the NPA rate then that forms your bank lending rate which is then um, offered when you go and take a loan so like we mentioned in point four that CBA wants to reduce cash and credit system and this is used when inflation is high inflation is the rate of increase in prices over a given period of time or simply put when there's too much money it's chasing few goods then by making it more expensive to borrow money. So during time of inflation, um, you have high demand with few supply and too much money chasing few goods. So that drives up the inflation rate. So I've done a quick sensitivity analysis to help us understand how the monetary policy rate, NPR, affects our lending decisions. So like we said that the NPR is the base rate, which the minimum a bank can lend out to a particular loan customer and then they add their own credit spread based on the uh, premium they've assessed based on risk in lending that particular fund to the customer and all things being equal that becomes the uh, bank 
interest rate that is being um, given out when a customer comes to take a loan. If you should approach a bank for a given loan, for instance, you, you could be charged 30.40% per annum interest rate. All right. At the 7.65% is just an hypothetical situation. So there are situations where uh, this might increase by 0.5% or more, right? What does that mean for our bank interest rates? So we've done a quick sensitive analysis where we have the bank interest rate and the credit spread, right? So if the spread increases from 7.65% to 8.15%, the bank interest rate that will be charged is 30.90%, higher than 304 then if the spread should increase to 8.65%, then your bank interest rate increased to 31.40%. Then if it gets up to 9.65%, then you may be charged 32.40%. You can see how all of these policies are put up by government is used to uh, drive the economic activities of a particular economy of a country over time. Thank you for listening and watching. See you in my next video. Bye.